let's pray. Father God in heaven, uh, thank you once more uh, that, that you have given us this opportunity, Lord, to study your words, study thy words, Father. Um, thank you, Lord God, uh, for my brothers and sisters that are already here uh, on time, Father, and uh, those that are on their way uh, to, to join. Lord, also uh, thank you for their lives. I pray, Lord God, that tonight, Lord, we will be able to understand your word fully. Lord God, uh, uh, according to your purpose, will and purpose in our lives, Lord. And uh, pray, Lord God, that uh, you, Holy Spirit, who is in us, uh, will illuminate the word so that we will understand, Lord God, every Lord. meaning uh, of the words, Father. And uh, so that this will lead to the strengthening of our faith. And this will lead, Father, uh, for us to to stand by thy word, to, to live out to leave your uh according to your words Lord God. May sa pamuhay po namin ito. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you Father. And I pray tonight Lord God that we will have the the attentiveness and receptive receptiveness to words. And I pray Father na magkaroon po kami ng uh, magandang interaction Lord God uh, uh, according to thy words Lord God so that uh, tunay nga Panginoon na uh, uh, ang ang aming tagapagturo Lord God uh i'm just a facilitator of this bible study but the, ultimately lord god you are you are the one who is teaching us father the holy spirit who is in us is the one teaching us lord god so thank you father god for tonight lord uh, we will claim the victory in your mighty name our lord and savior jesus christ amen and amen praise amen. the lord all right so magandang umaga once more sa inyo brothers and sisters uh so good evening Good evening po, Pastor Radyoan. Okay, so let's start our Bible study. So tonight, uh, natapos po natin last time yung ating topic. <clears throat> uh, pinamagatan natin yun na I want to see because we were talking uh, in that particular verse. We uh, Ang passage po natin, we found it from the book of, <clears throat> excuse me, from the book of Luke chapter 18 no verse 35 to 43 where we found we where we we found or we saw we read about the blind man and now uh, I think you can see from your screen no na shinare ko yung aking bible app uh we're going again to talk about a blind man but this one it's a, a different uh blind man other than what we have uh, discussed last time. <clears throat> but uh, tonight, we are going to talk about eyes fully open, eyes being fully open, because this is what the Lord Jesus Christ did to this man. No? He opened, he, he gave sight to the blind, but not only that, he made his eyes fully open. open no? So that's what we are going to discuss tonight. And our passage can be found... In the book of John, chapter 9, verse 1 to 41. Okay, book of John, chapter 9, verses 1 to 41. Yan po yung ating... Sige, lang po. Okay. Yan po yung ating um, uh, tatalakayin. So, <clears throat> may I ask uh, a volunteer to read the passage from the book of John, chapter 9? Anyone? Saka na PA. Mm -hmm. Oh, sige po. The book of... Verses. Book of John, chapter 1, verse 41. Chapter 1? Sorry, chapter Ay, 9. Akala. Chapter 9, verse 1 to 41. 1 to 41, okay. Yes. Uh, This one on the screen already? Hmm, yung nasa screen. Okay. Uh, Jesus heals a man born blind. As he went along, he saw a man be blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned that this man or his parents that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. 
but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him uh, seen him begging asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, No, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes opened? They asked. He replied, The man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and then I could see. Where is this man? They asked him. I don't know, he said. Uh, the Pharisees investigate the healing. Verse 13. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, How can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. Then they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, He is a prophet. They still did not believe that he had been blind and had received sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son? They asked. Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that now he can see? We know he is our son, the parents answered, and we know he was born blind. But how he can see now, or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders, who already had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. That was why his parents said, he is of age, ask him. A second time they summoned the man who had been blind. Give glory to God by pe telling the truth. They said, we know this man is a sinner. He replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. Then they asked him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I have told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Then they hurled insults at him and said, You are this fellow's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. The man answered, Now that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, You were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Spiritual blindness. Verse 35. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world so that the blind will see, and those who will see become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, What? Are we blind too? Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for thy words, Father. I pray, Lord God, that, that tonight, Lord, we may we will be able to, to understand, Lord God, the topic that we are going to discuss, Lord God. And um, thank you, Lord God, uh, because you have given your words to us. You, uh, and, and through your words, Lord God, you will bless us. 
Thank you very much, Lord. Please be praying in your mighty name, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pope. <clears throat> Thank you, Pope, Pastor Joan. Okay, so let's go back. Uh, we will discuss uh, in in uh, in group, I mean, in a group of verses. Okay, so first, let us try to understand the setting. Okay, so let us discuss from here. I highlight ko yung verse 1 to 5. Okay, so again, uh, like what I said no, in the from the introduction, that we are going to start again uh, our discussion with uh, a blind man. No, Of course, maybe you will ask, uh, Brother Ashes is there, right? Brother Ashes? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, He's there. Okay. So I will speak in English, Brother Sa, so he, uh, Brother Ashes will also understand. So <clears throat> maybe you will ask, uh, why are we, why are we always uh talking about blind man in our Bible study? No one is blind here. No, we are talking about. I know that none of us are blind, okay. Uh, but sometimes let us not be sure because, uh, blindness can have more than one meaning, no. Especially today, as we will encounter, uh, the blind man. Uh, with the Lord Jesus, and we will see how His healing can be ours too. No, that is our uh, objective tonight. So, in our discussion, as 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 I said, first I highlighted uh, verses one to five of of the book of John, chapter nine, where we are going to discuss about the setting. Okay, um, from verse five, from verse five. Here, could can someone read verse five? Uh, let's see from uh, the order of my screen, brother Ashes. Can you read verse five? Yes, Pastor. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Okay. So let me ask. Let me ask you, brother Ashes. What did the Lord Jesus mean when he said? He is the light of the world. Because he also is the, in the world. That's why he also light of the world. Uh, come again, brother. Because he says mm. he is the in the world. Ah, okay. And he also light of the world. Okay. Uh, thank you, Brother Ashis. Uh, any other answer? How about Brother Mani? So why do you think um, Jesus mean, Lord Jesus mean that uh, when, what do you mean he's, uh, when he said that he is the light of the world? Okay, I think Brother Man is not there. About uh, uh, Sister Catherine. Good evening, Papi. Good evening, Papi. Sister. Apo. Um, Narinig mo yun, Kanong? Apo. Ah... Based na lang po sa ano po sa experience po siguro. Meaning um if ever po na na harana pagka nasa kadiliman po tayo or hindi naman po talaga darkness na asin madilim yung paligid. Mm. Yung tipong uh, if ever that we have um problems that it seems that there's no solution. He, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, will serve as a light. Mm. Oh. Okay. Thank ano you. Ano po yung tanong? Ayun yung, yung, uh, um, po ay, nung, uh, yung sa verse 5, nakita niya po itong naka-highlight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, sabi dyan ng Panginoong Isus, He said that He's, uh, I am the light of the world. So, ang question is, 
Uh, what, why do you think, what did Jesus mean when he said he is the light of the world? Kasi po, din natin time nito, yung, uh, tibag, yung uh, senaryo. Nagtatanong yung mga disciple niya tungkol sa blind. Ngayon, sinagot siya niya yung mga, what, mga disciple. Mm. Nakita na niya, Igli ni Jesus Christ na siya yung light of the world. Which is totoo naman. Hindi ko ba? Kasi mm. nagmimit siya. So, sa ganong kwan, nagpapahapyaw na siya sa mga kwan niya na yung tungkol doon sa may blind na tinanong ng kwan. Dahil nga, ang pagkakapon ko po rito dahil pinangan ng araw siya ng penis niya. The blind. Tapos yung yung mother niya eh, may kasalanan daw. Actually, nung ipinanganak tayo, ay yung, pinang, yung ibang mga pinanganak naman, may mga iba may kapasanan, pero mapalad po tayo na yung ibang walang kapasanan. Pero siguro po, sa akin na, dahil po siguro po sa ano doon, yung mga generation ng mga uh, tulad dito. Minsan nakapag-asawa ng kamag-anak or uh, maaaring na-discussion nung siya nung nagkaroon siya ng uh, discussion nung kaya pinabubuntis ng one yeah. nung uh, nanay niya kaya pinanganak siya ng one. Pero nung tinanong niya ko nag-direct na, na sinabi niya I am the light of the world Meaning, in name na Jesus Christ, He is the light of the world para papatunayan niya na kaya niyang uh, pagalingin din yung yung taong uh, bulag. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So, <clears throat> here in verse, thank you po sa uh, mga sagot nyo, everyone. So, here in verse 5, just to make it simple, okay? The Lord Jesus says, I am in the light of the world. When do, do when do we need light? For example, if you enter a room, okay, and uh, you cannot see. Why you cannot see? Because it is dark. So what do you do? When you enter a room that is dark? We need light. Oh. Yeah, yes, you need light, right? So uh, that's why from here, from verse 5, the Lord Jesus said, I am, while I am the world, I am the light of the world. So that means he, he the Lord Jesus Christ basically is saying that the world is in darkness. That's why uh, he is referring to himself as the light of the world, right? That's why he is saying that while I am, uh, I am in the world, I am the light of the world because the world is in darkness. Now, my question is, um uh do you agree that the world is in darkness? Oh, Pastor. Mm, amen, di ba? Amen. So that means the statement of the Lord Jesus Christ is correct that that he is the light of the world, right? Now, in what ways is the world in darkness? Can you think of uh ways where we can say the world is in darkness. Uh, 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 Sister Grace. The, the, um, the world is still a thing. The world is still carnal. So we are under, still in the, on, the, uh, on the world. Mm. That's why that the Lord is all saying that he is the light. Because he's the only one who uh, uh, don't have sin. Mm. Amen. So yes, that's correct. No, one is sin, right? Well, actually, yun yun na talaga yun. yun that is the kumbaga uh, ibig ibig binon. Kumbaga yun na yung pinaka ultimate no, uh, ultimate uh, reason why the world is in darkness because uh, people live in sin. No, that's why we need the Lord Jesus Christ. But here, see, the Lord Jesus Christ is saying uh, in verse five. He said, 
while I am still in the world. So while I am still in the world, I am the light of the world. Now, the question now is, now that he is no longer in the world, now don't, don't get me wrong, okay? Because uh, the, the Lord Jesus Christ is omnipresent. He is everywhere, no? Uh, but physically, physically, the Lord Jesus Christ is not anymore in the world, right? Kaya nga sabi niya, while I'm in the world, because the Lord Jesus Christ knows that there will come a time that he will leave the world, right? Kaya sabi niya, while I am uh, in the world, I am the light of the world. But now that he is no longer in the world, does it mean that the world has no more light? So ngayon, di ba, ang sabi ng Panginoong Isus, siya ang ilaw ng mundo. Ngayon na wala na siya sa mundo, does it mean na wala nang ilaw ang mundo? Or wala nang liwanag ang mundo? Hindi po ba sa no kasi Ayun, sino yung sumagot niyan? Ate Presi. Opo, Pastor. And explain. Uh, we cannot say that uh, now that our Lord Jesus Christ is no longer uh, in the world, that the world has no light anymore. Because uh, first of all, He gave His word to us and that word has the truth na okay. yun yung batayan natin sa ngayon na nagbibigay sa atin ng uh, liwanag. Mm. That's true. Okay? That's true. Uh, the world, the, yung, yung kanyang word yung nagbibigay ng liwanag. Pero, if we go to, I will go to Matthew. Okay? Uh, Matthew chapter 5. And nakikita niyo yung Bible ko ha? You can see my Bible, right? Yan. Ate Presi, can you can you read this one? Matthew chapter 5 verse 14. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Amen. So that that's why uh your your answer is right that that through the words of God <clears throat> nandoon yung yung liwanag, nandoon kasi yung truth. But however, when we receive the words, no, anong sabi ng sa Matthew ch chapter 5 verse 14, we now have become the light of the world. So the question is, why, why, because the, now that the Lord Jesus Christ is no longer in the world, does it mean that the world has no more light? So the answer is, no, the world still has light. And anong sabi? Sa Matthew 5.14, tayo na ngayon, we are the ones who who is now the light of the world. Diba? Tayo mga mananampalataya, us who have uh, true faith in Christ, diba? the Lord Jesus Christ, na sinasapamuhay natin yung ating mga, uh, yung ating mga pananampalataya. Amen? Naintindihan niyo po? Opo, Pastor. Amen. <coughs> So, let's go back there, okay? Let's go back. Now, <clears throat> that is the setting, okay? Now, let's go and understand yung ginawa ng Panginoong Isus about the healing noong uh, blind man. So, babasahin natin from 6 to 12. Uh, no, nabasa na pala natin. So, uh, yeah, or gusto nyo basahin pa natin. Siguro mas maganda basahin natin ulit once more. Yan. Sino na ba yung huli kong tinawag kanina? Uh, si Ate Grace yung huli kong tinawag, no? Uh, sige. From the order of my screen, si Ate Christina naman. Ate Christina, please can you read from, from uh, verse 6 dito? Hanggang 12. Okay po. Verse 6. After saying this, his feet on the ground, made some mud with the saliva and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging us, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. 
Others said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How, how then were your eyes opened, they asked. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. Where is this man? They asked him. I don't know, he said. Okay. Thank you po, uh, Ate Christina. Now, um, let me ask you, Ate Christina. Okay. Uh, why did why do you think why did the Lord Jesus Christ went to the trouble of mixing mud and and his spit spit meaning yung kanyang laway diba yung saliva? Uh, why did, do you think the Lord Jesus Christ go to the trouble of mixing mud and and his spit and asking the blind man to go and wash? Could he not uh, heal him by saying a word? No, we all know that the Lord Jesus Christ is powerful. You know, by his words he can heal him. But why do you think uh, he he uses mud and yung kanyang spit, yung kanyang laway, saliva? Uh, wala po akong idea. Pero kung ano po, siguro dahil ang tao po galing sa mud and then uh, galing din po tayo yung spirit po natin galing sa breath po ni God. Pero hmm. Hindi po ako sure PA. Ah. Wala po akong idea bakit. Uh, that's okay. That's okay po. Because hindi naman hindi naman in-imply or hindi naman directly directly uh, it's not directly written kasi in the in the passage why the Lord Jesus Christ took mud and uh, spit from doon sa sa doon sa mud, no? Tapos inilagay niya uh, then he put it on the eyes of the blind man. So from there we can draw many uh conclusion or many assumptions as well like what you said no because we are we came from that so maybe that's why Lord Jesus Christ took it from the from, from there uh so so many conclusions can be drip, uh, de derived from there uh however for the sake of our discussion tonight no we will uh, we will uh say that The Lord Jesus Christ did this as the the Lord Jesus Christ wanted to test the faith of the uh, faith and obedience of that blind man, right? Remember the Lord Jesus Christ. He always uh, uh, when he when he heals, he heals according to the faith, right? And uh, uh, this blind man, uh, because see, anu. What is the significance? Ano ba yung significance? What is the significance of Jesus, the Lord is using mud and spit? Which are seeming, see, see, uh, it seems na worthless naman yung mud, no? Saka yung spit to heal para pagalingin yung, yung mata ng blind man. Again, sabi ko nga, we can do, draw or we can drive many, many conclusions or answers from that. But for the sake of our study, uh, the, 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 the answer that we're going to derive is because the Lord Jesus wanted to test his faith because that is also possible, no? Uh, because it's a simple mud and lalo na dinuraan pa ng Panginoong Jesus, no? So like, for example, sig siguro sa inyong mga babae, just, no? yung mud, tapos, let's say, you will come to me and then I will take a mud and then uh, duduraan ko. So... Siguro hindi niyo ilalagay sa mata niyo 'yun, 'di ba? Uh, baka mandidiri kayo, 'di ba? Uh, so lalo na the blind man is not uh, a follower of the Lord Jesus. Actually, uh kung titingnan nga natin dito, uh, sa binasa mo, uh, I don't know, sabi niya, where, where is this man? They ask. I don't know. Uh, so makikita natin later on na uh, hindi pa pala talaga lubusang kilala nitong blind man ng Panginoong Jesus, no? So ayun nga for the sake of our study uh what can we say is that the Lord Jesus Christ used the most ordinary and worthless things to do wondrous you know wondrous things and uh, that is to test the faith sabi ko nga to test the faith of that um uh blind man you no know, and yung kanyang obedience sa Panginoong Hesus na Uh, diba he was he was 
blind from uh, birth. And then here comes the Lord Jesus using a simple mud and and spitting uh, on that mud. Will he will he obey the Lord Jesus Christ or not? No, from that uh in instruction na ilagay doon sa kanyang mata and we we see that he obeyed right so i can see pastor john raising hand right pastor john um i actually that that question i asked myself before so i also researched on on why he had to speak because if 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 that were to happen to me today, parang you. <laughs> oh. That's the truth. Lalo na COVID, di ba? But um, uh, uh, as a result of my research before, kasi there, there are three cases where the Lord Jesus used his uh, saliva to heal. Um, ano ba? Uh, I cannot remember, but uh, one, I think, a, a deaf man, tapos... At eto nga, this is the second one. I cannot remember the third one, but uh, there were three cases. And according according to the um Bible scholars at that time, Bible scholars at that time, uh they they deem saliva uh, as part of the healing uh, during during those time in their in in their court ano in their culture. So by by the by Jesus using his saliva, he was um showing his intention to heal that that uh that blind man and uh, a part of it also to raise the the uh the faith the expectation and the faith of the one he is going to heal mm. so parang it's like it's like a it's like props pero not not really props kasi he's, he also used uh in in other miracles he did not uh, use uh, saliva but um by doing so jesus was indicating that hey um that uh, that he was going to heal the man who is blind that's why he also at uh, the mud and the washing in the siloam um goes hand in hand uh there is the physical uh physical um intention for the healing to occur for the healing to happen so he had to do that. Mm. Okay. So basically, yun nga, um, from the what we can draw, uh, if we leave, because our focus is not on the on the healing itself, but on the on what the response of the blind man, you no, know, according to that simple mud and and spit. So sabi nga natin, uh, from that gesture no uh, lalo na he doesn't know the lord jesus christ and uh, mud and and uh, and uh, he uh, the lord jesus christ put saliva even on that mud and with that he followed what the lord jesus christ uh, said to him so from that the healing uh, happened nagtaas ng kamay si kuya manuel kuya manuel Good evening po, PA. Good evening po, Kaya Manuel. Uh, na, nasabi, parang nasabi na kasi ni PJ yung gusto kong sabihin. Ah, okay. Pero gusto ko lang i-add po yung significance ng mud. Mm. Yung ginawa ni Jesus Christ. Tama, na, ta, tama po si PJ. No? Significance na yung saliva. Hmm. Pero rinagdagan niya ng mud, tapos sinilagay sa mata. He put it on the eyes of the blind to indicate kung saan ang kanyang puhugbasan. And then, it, what is the significance ng pull of Siloam? Bakit doon siya pinapapunta ni Jesus Christ magwash Because the pull of Siloam is, uh, came from ano, uh, the city of David from the Gihon Spring. It means, sino po yung ano, yung galing sa lahi ni David mm. na spring of life it's Jesus Christ mm. so that's the significance po ng ng mud and the pool bakit doon siya sa pool pinapunta ito uh, isa, isa pa makita yung para makita yung faith ng bulag kasi kung hindi niya binigyan ng 
hindi niya nilagyan ng mud yung mata niya, anong kuhugasan niya. Mm. So he went to wash himself and pinapusto lang ipakita ni Jesus Christ dito na yung pool na yun, it, it is, uh, no, it represents him. Because. Para kanyang pagalingin. Oo, oh, po po, yun po. Okay po. Amen. So, thank you for the 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 insights uh, Pastor Rajaan and uh, Brother Manuel. So that that is that is true no yung mga sinabi nyo. And uh, now in this Bible study, so we will go back to our focus will be on the the on on the fate of this uh, blind man, okay? So because we can ano, we can uh, relate to to Let's put ourselves in the shoes of the blind man. Okay, here comes the Lord Jesus. We don't know him uh, fully because at that time, the blind man uh, doesn't know the Lord Jesus fully well, right? Uh, wala pa siyang, wala pa siyang uh, talagang... Kasi later on, makikita natin dun sa, sa mga last verses, it's only by then na nakilala niya talaga fully kung sino ang Panginoong Jesus, no? And now, here we are. We can relate to this, no? Uh, especially if we, if we are a new new Christian, yung uh, bago pa lang ang ating pananampalataya. Uh, sometimes we often feel like, for example, in the church, we feel like, uh, uh, what can I, what can I uh, do or what can I? Yung ano ba yung sa, sa tagalog? Ano yung maitutulong? Ano ba sa English nang maitutulong? What can I? What, what can, can I contribute? Yun, contribute. Yun, thank you po. Yun, what can I contribute sa church? Sometimes ganun, no? O hindi lang hindi lang sa church. Uh, siguro, what can I contribute uh, para sa uh, uh, Great Commission, for example, no? Sometimes we feel like that, no? We we feel wala naman akong special talent, for example. Uh, sa, sa, for example, sa music ministry, gusto natin mag pero wala naman akong talent no so sometimes we feel that we don't have that ability to communicate the lord jesus even to others no yan i think that that is one of the reason din eh, kung bakit uh, uh, hindi tayo makahayo no nando doon yung ating uh, um uh, 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 could i say uh, parang hesitancy no naghesitate tayo because sometimes we feel that we don't have that ability to communicate the Lord Jesus to others. But here, no, we can see, uh, like yung mud and yung spit na ibinigay ng Panginoong Jesus nung nakita niya yung blind man, di ba? You can see from here. No, So, sa verse 6, After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud and saliva, and put on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. So, Simple as that, hindi pa kilala gaano ng blind man, no, ang Panginoong Isus. But the blind man obey. Nandoon doon yung willingness niya, no? Yung the, the, his willingness is there uh to follow yung sinabi ng Panginoong Isus. And with that simple things, no, the Lord Jesus Christ has done wonderful things. What what I'm trying to say is what is important is yung availability natin. Sometimes, sometimes kasi, hindi tayo nagiging available, di ba? Because we are busy on so many things. So that's why the Lord Jesus Christ is not able to to use us, not able to do wondrous things through us. No? Now, ano yung naging result ng obedience? What was the result of the blind man's faith and obedience? No? <clears throat> What was the result? We can see here. Uh, so verse 7. He went, right? He went and then. So the man went and washed. And came home seeing. See, so he, he followed what the Lord Jesus Christ said. And he came home seeing. Now. Tignan natin. Let's see the effects. The healing had on the formerly blind man himself and his to his neighbors. Tingnan natin yung, yung naging epek ng ginawa ng Panginoong Isus. 
Now, in verse 8, what was the reaction of, uh, what reactions did his neighbors have? Yung uh, blind man. Uh, we can see here from verse 8. Si, kanino na ba ako nagtapos? Kay Ate Christina. Kay Kuya Manuel. Kuya Manuel. Verse his neighbors, mm. his neighbors as eh, his neighbors and those who had formerly seen him mm. begging us, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Mm. Yeah. So, ano yung na, so the question is, Kuya Manuel, what what was the reaction of the neighbors? Mm, nagulat po sila. Hmm. Oh, nagtaka sila, di ba? So, nagtaka sila, maganda siya nakakita. Hmm. So, ibig sabihin, they noticed, no? they noticed the change. Yes po. They noticed the change. Hmm. They want and they wanted to know how it happened, no? Kaya na yata, hmm. tanong nila eh. No, it only looks like him, no? <clears throat> how then were, were your eyes open? Sa, hanggang sa verse 10 pala. No, yun, tinatanong nila. They noticed the change eh, in the blind man. And uh, they wanted to know how it happened. You see, the same thing happens to us, right? Uh, nung binago tayo ng Panginoong Jesus. Sometimes, like for example, uh, magandang example niyan, I can remember ako noon. Nung, when I first, uh, uh, my first time going home to the Philippines as a born-again Christian, my friends, uh, they were also asking because they saw the change. No, they saw the change. Hindi na ako nagbumura. I don't curse. Uh, um, tapos, uh, ang most evident yan is yung alam nyo na pag sa Pilipinas, di ba, yung otagay naman, ganyan. No? So, nando doon na, na gagawa ko ng uh, hindi. So, na, nando doon ako, pasama nila, siyempre, eh, mga kaibigan mo, di ba, pero hindi ka na nakikipag- uh, nakikijoin sa kanila sa mga ganung ginagawa nila sa mga ganung vision nila but they can see the change no so they're asking and uh, they wanted to know kagaya rin dito no ng mga neighbors niya and what reactions did he himself no did the blind man himself have ano yung reaction na na nung blind man uh, kanina na tayo ate Presi Sa 11 po ba, sir? Yo, oh, ano yung reaction ng blind man dun sa kanyang mga neighbors? Yung reaction po niya is uh, sinabi niya kung ano yung nangyari mm. sa mga uh, neighbors niya na nagtatanong sa kanya kung uh, bakit siya nakakita? So, sinabi po niya kung ano yung nangyari sa kanya or ginawa sa kanya. Mm. Mm. So, yes. So, meaning uh, meron, nagkaroon siya ng aware, awareness na nakakakita. Of course, eh, physically, kung blind ka, hindi ka nakakita before. You cannot see before, but now you can see. So, uh, obviously, you, you, you would become aware. No? And, uh, Ganun, so ganun yung nangyari no and he admitted it right he had because nag nagtatanong yung mga neighbors niya eh. so he admitted it and uh yung blindness here like what what we discussed last time in our bible study can be twofold can have a twofold meaning one is physical blindness and the other is yung tinatawag natin na spiritual blindness now we defined na yung spiritual blind, blindness before no doon sa ating topic now uh, ang tanong ngayon is yung ating bang mga spiritual eyes are open na when i say spiritual eyes don't think yung alam kasi sa sa Pilipinas di ba meron tinatawag o oh, meron kang spiritual eyes yung nang nakakita ng mga kung ano-ano yung mga nakakita ng mga maligno nakakita ng ghost no hindi yun yung, <laughs> hindi yun tinutukoy ko dito na <laughs> yung tinutukoy natin dito sa topic na to no na spiritual eyes uh, ang tinutukoy natin dito is uh, let's reflect on the previous uh, study. Yung spiritual eyes natin because uh, remember yung sa, um, sa umpisa, di ba? In verse 
5, the Lord Jesus Christ say, says, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world. So I ask you, why, why does the Lord Jesus Christ say that he is the light of the world? Does that mean that the world is in darkness? So you said, uh, yes, the world is in darkness. How come the, the world is in darkness? The world is in darkness because of sin. So meaning, uh, if we are living in sin, nandu doon tayo sa darkness. No? And uh, we know that uh, physic being physically blind, we cannot see, meaning it's dark, right? It's the same thing with its spiritual blindness. No, We cannot, uh, there are times that we are sinning and yet we cannot see. No, we 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 uh, hindi natin ma-admit, hindi natin makita yung uh, um, ating kasalanan. At yun yung natawag natin na spiritual blindness. No, kagaya ng mga, for example, kagaya ng mga parisi, uh, they knew that what they were doing was wrong. When in fact, actually, hindi na. No, they were actually sinning na already. Now. When we receive Jesus into our hearts, is it possible to have no change in our life? What do you think? We are all born again Christians, right? So we have all uh, experienced uh, receiving the Lord Jesus Christ in our life. So ask yourself, is it possible to have no change in your life? Me? Uh, teka. Nag, uh, Brad Ronel, pass, good evening po, listener lang po, may mga tulog na, <laughs> excuse me po, dito sa kwarto. Okay po, Kuya Ronel. So me, I think no, uh, because from my personal experience, uh, hindi pwedeng walang change eh. If we, if we really receive the Lord Jesus Christ into our heart, hindi pwedeng walang change. Meron at merong change talaga. May mababago. No? Uh, and what will be the effects on yourself and and to your friends or to to your loved ones no kagaya nito yung yung pinag-aaralan natin they will surely notice the difference and you yourself will know will know the difference meaning you yourself will know yung nabago sa inyo so tanungin niyo mga sarili niyo may mga nabago ba sa inyo mula nung kayo naging manampalataya I believe meron, right? Because if wala, then maybe hindi pa natin talaga puli tinatanggap ang Panginoong Isus. That's why uh, pinag-aaralan natin yung tinatawag natin spiritual blindness. Spiritual blindness means you are in darkness, means we are still in sin. Is it, it is possible, you know, that that um, uh, maybe I'm not talking, uh, maybe uh, from the from my audience here, Maybe it's not you. Maybe in there will come a time na hahayo tayo tapos uh, mag-share tayo ng, ng salinta ng Diyos. This is applicable to them. Maybe this is not applicable to you. Maybe because we are not, uh, we are all sinners, but maybe we are not anymore living in sin. Meaning, hindi na tayo kagaya dati na pagka tayo, when we sin, no, it's like uh, kumbaga normal lang. No? Na hindi na tayo ngayon. Hindi na tayo ganun ngayon. No. But however, itong pinag-aaralan natin about spiritual blindness is this is also this can also happen to us, no? Lalo na pagka you know sometimes when nagiging routine na yung ating uh, mga ginagawa, uh, no? Sometimes we hindi na natin nanonotice, no? Kagaya nga po nung napag-aralan natin noon last time na nagkakaroon na ng mga hindrances sa buhay natin, no? Now Let's talk about naman yung re naging reaction. So, we discuss about the reaction of the neighbors. Now, let's talk about the reaction of the Pharisees. From verse 13 naman dito. Uh, <clears throat> saan na tayo? Kanina? Sino yung tinanong ko? Si Ate Presi ba yun? Ate Presi? Oh, Pastor, ako po yung tinilang na kanina. Ati Presi, pwedeng... Excuse me, pwedeng basahin mo po ito? Verse um, 23. Sige po, basta. Sige po. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had been blind. 14. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. 
Therefore, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But orders, others asked, How can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. Then they turned again to the man, to the blind man. What have you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, He is a prophet. They also still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son? They asked. Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that now he can see? We know he is our son, the parents answered, and we know he was born blind. But how he can see now, or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders, who already had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Mm. So, uh, to press a question po before you uh, unmute. So, what reactions, so parang uh, summary lang, what reactions did the Pharisees have? Uh, they don't believe that uh, Jesus uh, is the one who healed the, the blind man. So, hindi sila makapaniwala na he don't believe, he can, they cannot believe that the, this man uh is uh was born blind so they were they kept on asking him and uh later on they called his parents to ask uh why is this is the their son is really born blind so mm -hmm. so do you think when they investigated did they really want to know the truth or did they have other motives i think pastor uh they have other motives because they themselves know that uh jesus is the one who healed the the uh, this blind man because here in uh, verse 22 uh it says here that uh jewish leaders who already had decided that anyone who acknowledged that jesus was the messiah would be put out of the synagogue so mm -hmm. automatically the parents were afraid uh to acknowledge that uh, jesus is the one who healed their son mm -hmm. thank you po so ayun kagaya like what uh, Ate Presi said no in verse 22 because in verse 22 it says his parents said he, this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders who already had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue you know in some way sometimes i can relate uh, to myself no i speak for myself i don't know maybe this this can this happens to you also uh, sometimes we are like the 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 healed healed man's parents no para tayong yung magulang nung ano din nung uh, nung bulag sometimes if not often we are afraid also to bear witness to the lord jesus among our friends for fear of being considered na oh oh ay naman tong si aldrin no sometimes uh, for fear of being ostracized no and things like that do you also feel that way o pastor radio nagtaas ng kamay i uh, yes um uh, i also feel that way but there's also this uh, other other side uh, other things that's happening that's just it's not just outside but even within the church Sometimes uh, we 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 find ourselves in a situation. I don't know if you will remember Pastor Aldrin when we knew that uh, we were we were really standing on the truth, but uh, most of the people around us or most of the yeah most of the uh, believers around us think otherwise, and uh, there were times that we had to. We had to, there were times that we really spoke up, but there were times that we, we just, uh, we just had to be silent and really prayed for God to intervene um, because they were like, they were blinded and, or they are uh, ready, 
they already made a decision based on based on their 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 judgment based on their their preconceived uh, ideas so sometimes it's um one it's better to just be silent and pray to god to intervene otherwise there it would cause more chaos or division within the group Mm. If you will remember that happened a lot of times before. Yeah, yes, of course I I remember, but but some some of some of you well most of you here in in this group now uh you you're not the original from the original uh members of the the JRK church so uh that's why maybe you cannot relate uh but the uh, Pastor John was talking from history uh when uh. Well, it's not the topic of our Bible study tonight, but uh, yes, that's true. No, sometimes, kasi because of uh, this spiritual blindness, sometimes uh, yung sin, kumbaga nagkakampi-kampihan na sometimes, no? Uh, merong, parang merong ulterior motive, ganun. So, hindi na yung truth, no? Hindi na yung truth, kundi yung yung uh, motives na ng, ng tao. Yun na yung... Uh, uh anong tawag doon yun na yung nangingibabaw so that's why that's what pastor John was saying and it, it's happening no um it happened before what's that's what i'm trying to say uh i can uh, i can see nagtaas ng kamay si brother Arnel and then after that si Ate Mary Salata si brother Arnel muna Po. Blessings po. Actually, hindi po. <laughs> hindi po ako nagtaas. Kaya lang yung pagbukas ko ng pinto at paghawa ko dito sa nakabukas yung uh-huh. Zoom. Opo. <laughs> okay. Uh, napindot yung yung icon. Tapos di ko alam Opo. may raise hand pala. Opo. Ayun. Okay po. Pero yung lang pong masig- ma- ano ko lang siguro po patungkol dito sa ano ating binabasa ngayon. Nakita ko lang po dito yung appointment ng Diyos. Hmm. kapag ka dumarating ang appointment ni Jesus sa isang tao na uh, ang bulag kasi ay parang nire-represent dito na uh, hindi pa talaga nakikita yung katotohanan hmm. kapag ka na, nakatagpo na, na, nakatag, natagpuan siya ng Panginoong Jesus kasi kung makikita po natin sa pinaka verse 1 ay ang Panginoong Jesus ang nakakita doon sa blind man Tama. At hindi yung blind man ang naghahanap sa Panginoong Yesus. Hmm. So, ang Panginoong Yesus ang may appointment dun sa blind man na nagre-represent sa isang sinner. Hmm. And as he said na he was sent, pinadala siya, ng, pinadala siya para magkampanan niya yung pinapagawa sa kanya ng Ama. Hmm. That the works of God should be revealed in him. So, yung mercy ng Panginoong Diyos ay makikita dun sa isang blind, which is, kung makikita natin sa perspective ng blindness, is yung impossibility na magbago yung isang tao, ay makikita natin dito yung kapangyarihan ng Diyos sa pamamangita ng Panginoong Jesus na makapagpalaya, makapagligtas. Ayon sa pagpadala ng Ama sa Kanya, at kung makikita po natin dito yung pagpunas niya ng putik with his saliva, Hmm. ay pinapakita niya rin po dito kung paano ang ang, ang Diyos ay pumunta sa, sa lupa uparang tubusin tayo sa ating mga kasalanan at yung pag-utos niya papunta sa sa Pool of Siloam Siloam ay yung hmm. pong repentance ang kailangan ng tao na dalhin ang ang ating mga kasalanan sa kanyang paanan upang tayo ay talagang maka Magbago. Ito po yung aking nag, uh, nag-rema sa akin sa pakikinig at sa pagbabasa dandahan. At yun nga po, tulad nga po nang nasabi ninyo, Pastor, uh, kapag ang isang tao ay talagang tunay na nakatagpo ng Panginoong Yesus ay very uh, obvious or kitang-kita yung pagbabago talaga sa isang tao. Hindi po pilit na pagbabago, kundi yung talagang uh, isang pagbabago na malayo dun sa dating siya. Hmm. So yung po yung isang evidence na talaga nakatagpo ng isang 
believer ang Panginoong Heso Kristo not by according to pagiging active lang sa church, kundi talagang meron siyang personal encounter with Jesus that will be evident at mapapansin, noticeable talaga sa mga tao at lalong-lalo sa kanilang mga family. Hmm. So, makikita ko rin po doon yung parents na takot na i- ipaalam sa mga pariseyo or mapalis sila doon sa sinagog hmm. kapag nalaman na uh, yun pa lamang po ang aking nasasagap sa aking pagkikinig at pagbabasa. So, ayan po. Ay, yung pagtaas ko ng kamay, accidental na po. <laughs> Dahil kararating ko lang po sa bahay at pagbukas ko ng pinto, nakita ko na naka Praise and the yung ano ko nakahawa ako sa cellphone ko. Uh, Ayun po. Oh, pray okay. na pa yung Diyos. Salamat Thank po. You for sharing uh, your your ano insight doon sa sa iyo pong pagkaintindi sa so nabasa uh, Kuya Arnel. Uh, may nagtaas pa ng kamay kanina eh. Sino pa yun? Si Ate Maricel. Ikaw ata nagtaas na Ate Maricel no? Opo, P. P. Opo. Okay. Uh, ano ko lang naman po yung gadagdagan ko lang kay yung kay kay Pastor Joan kasi uh, doon sa inalisan ko sa Dubai na hmm. church ganun po yung pare nagkaroon ng division. Hmm. Nahati sila sa dalawang hmm. Ang isa ay para kay Jesus, ang isa daw ay God. Kay kay God. Yun lang po yun yung naiwanan ko doon sa Dubai. Okay po. Dating ano chart. Na, nahati, wala naman na si Brother Ashis no. Pwede tayo mag uh, Tagalog. Na si nahati, isa na naniniwala sa Diyos, yung isa na naniniwala kay Jesus. Tama? Kay Jesus po. Okay, intindi ko siya. Opo, ganoon nga po yung nangyari. Parang nagkaroon sila ng panibagong ministry na inaano nire-represent nila si Jesus at saka yung God. Parang dun dun nga rin po ako PA na ano eh, na confuse din eh kasi kasi 'di ba may may mga may mga believer kasi na talagang si Jesus is yung God na talagang ano, walang walang father God. As in as in Jesus is God. Totoo naman po yung na God pero pero may iba naman na Bukod kay Jesus, may God pa. Kaya yun po yun. Parang ganun nangyari. Nahati talaga yung... yung Nagkaroon talaga ng division yung inalisan ko yun na, na church. Uh, okay. Sige. Bago ako maging nangyari yun. So hindi yan yung topic natin for tonight. So hindi tayo mag-focus okay. yan. Pero we all know that uh, uh, we have a triun God, right? Uh, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So uh, uh there's only one god uh but uh, uh we have a triune god you know god the father son and holy spirit so, but later on sa mga bible study natin matatopic din natin yan and uh, uh maganda ma raise din kung meron kang katanungan may raise mo yung katanungan mo diyan okay po so thank you for your insights Uh, brothers and sisters so now let's let's move na po to uh, nasa 24 tayo kanina di ba so this one sa so 24 a second time no nagtapos tayo sa 23 so ito naman sa verse 24 to 34 ako na lang ako naman na po ang magbasa uh, sa verse 24 ito naman yung second confrontation with the Pharisees no um, sabi po dito A second time, they summoned the man who had been blind. Give glory to God by telling the truth. Uh, they, they said, we know this man is a sinner. He replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. Then they asked him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I have told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become the, his disciples too? Then they hurled insults at him and said, You are this fellow's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, Moses, but as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. The man 
answered, now that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to the godly person who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing to this. They replied, you were steep in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. So from here, since the parity, since the Pharisees, no, uh, sabi ko nga sa inyo, y- yung motive kasi nila, eh, they were too authoritative and much more educated than the healed man. No? Why do they why do you think do they ask the healed man uh so courageously in arguing? I mean, why do you think the healed man is so courageous in arguing with the Pharisee? Kasi, di ba, uh we know the Pharisee are educated, but the this healed man uh in terms of of, of his belief, religious belief at that time, maybe is not. But why do you think he is so courageous? no in argue, in in his argument with the parisees no kaya nga napipikon na nga yung mga parisee yung mga pariseyo sa kanila eh, no so of course here we can see because he had that experience na already of personally being healed by the lord jesus that's why he is standing from from that truth na na na, na experience niya yung healing from the lord jesus now how do we apply this in our lives no how do we apply this in our conversation with others regarding spiritual matters there may be many theological questions sometimes which may not we which some somehow sometimes we not we do not know the answer and sometimes yun yung nagiging dahilan eh kung bakit uh, you know sometimes na ano tayo na ano tawag dito yung na nahihiya tayo na mag-share no for fear that maybe uh, they will ask us some questions na hindi natin na uh, uh, masagot no but if we have personally re- received the lord jesus into our lives kaya nga tinatanong ko when we receive the lord jesus christ into our lives no may mababago at mababago sa atin eh, no then from that change we can bear witness to that reality no Uh, yung yung pagkabago sa atin we can bear witness to that you doon tayo mag-focus kagaya rin ito nung blind man di ba so when uh, the the Pharisees was questioning him eh saan ba siya nag-focus nag-focus ba siya meron ba siyang binato sa kanila ng salita ng Diyos no ang focus niya doon sa experience niya di ba ganun din tayo na uh, mga mananampalataya na, na na naging mananampalataya tayo binago tayo ng Panginoong Hesus no doon tayo mag-focus doon sa pagbabago na na na-receive natin no if and when some of us go to college for example some professor na uh, well hindi na tayo pupunta ng college tapos na kasi tayo no uh, uh, maybe sa trabaho natin no and some colleagues of us maybe who appears to be learned no and uh, authoritative maybe will ridicule your faith and uh uh and uh you know will will we'll, maybe hindi hindi lang maybe kay maybe kay bigan niyo then no and will will hurl insults no sa inyong pananampalataya then you can always stand on solid ground by po- pointing to your personal experience with the Lord Jesus yung naranasan natin kagaya din nito nung blind man no yung naranasan niya sa Panginoong Hesus no uh, now in contrast so doon naman sa mga parents niya no he, his parents did not dare tell the Pharisees what really happened no? because they were afraid and the experience to them was second hand no yung kasi the um the blind man yung experience niya kasi sa Panginoong Hesus was first hand experience whereas yung sa parents niya niya second hand experience meaning uh, kinukuwento lang di ba nung kinukuwento lang nung anak nila kung ano kung paano siya pinagaling ng Panginoong Hesus remember yung uh, uh, Samaritana yung yung Samaritan woman di ba sabi ng mga uh, 
uh, Samaritan na uh, now uh, we do not be, we do not uh, believe only according to the testimony of the woman, di ba? But now we have heard directly from the Lord Jesus. So kasi second hand yung yung experience eh, nung parents niya eh. Pero to the healed man, it was first hand experience. So dapat, what I'm trying to say is dapat ganun din tayo bilang uh, mga Kristiyano. Of course, we have experienced the change in us. We have, we have experienced the Lord Jesus Christ. So doon tayo. No, doon natin, uh, yun ang panghawakan natin. In our spiritual lives, what is our first hand experience and what is your second hand? No? Uh, think think of it, no? Ano yung first hand experience nyo? Sa Panginoong Isus, meaning na encounter nyo talaga kung saan na encounter nyo ang Panginoong Isus, no? So that is your first hand experience and yung second hand experience nyo, maybe for example kagaya nito, uh, nakarinig tayo ng testimony from others, no? So we can say that second hand experience because narinig lang natin yung testimony. Pero yung first hand experience, yeah. Baby, quiet. Pero the first hand experience, of course, yun yun tayo talaga naka-experience naka na tayo noon. No? Sometimes some of us go to church only because our our parents or our friends wants us to go. Sometimes, di ba, na-invite tayo or meron tayo na-invite. They may be real Christians, yung mga na-invite natin, but our association with Christ through them is only second-hand experience. For example, yung mga na-invite natin, no, yung ating association with them, second-hand experience lang nila yun. But we need; they need to receive the Lord Jesus into their hearts, no, to have a person experience. Kagaya ng anong pinag-usapan natin ngayon. So pinapastra ko na lang para umabot tayo, ha? Although the healed man gave courageous testimony about the Lord Jesus Christ, what happened to him in verse thirty-four? Okay, in verse thirty-four, it says, "To this they replied, you were stiff in sin at birth." How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Anong ginawa sa kanya? They threw him out. This, this, sometimes we will also experience persecution kasi ito eh, no? That's what we learn. Sometimes in our, uh, from, uh, from us being honest, telling our personal experience, we will, uh, we will experience persecution also. At times, di ba? Even the Lord Jesus Christ said that uh, the the world persecuted him, no? So we will also go through that same uh, persecution. But praise the Lord because he is intercede. The Lord Jesus Christ is interceding for us. Amen. So now, let's go to verse thirty-five to forty-one. Okay. So this is uh, very important. Itong verse thirty-five to forty-one. <clears throat> Nabasa na natin to kanina eh, di ba? Or gusto niya basahin pa natin? Basahin ko na lang uli. So, basahin ko verse 35. Jesus heard that they had throw him out and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? So, see here, if, uh, the, the, the blind man doesn't know who is the Lord Jesus Christ. Who is he, sir? The man asked, tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, for judgment, I have come into this world so that the blind will see and those who, who see will become blind. Some Pharisees, some Pharisees were, uh, some Pharisees who were with him heard him say this and asked, what are we blind to? Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. Now, a question. Why did the Lord Jesus Christ come and look for, for the healed man? So just for the benefit of, of uh, time, uh, I can say two things in here. No, One is because uh, the Lord Jesus Christ may be concerned for the well-being of the the man, because here from here we can see no na hindi niya pangakilala ang panginoong Jesus, right? And then another is because the Lord Jesus Christ wants to fully open his spiritual eyes. 
Now, hmm, let us, for, for, for this one, I will ask questions. Let us trace yung various stages ng understanding ng, ng man of who the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's start from verse 11. Okay, let's start from verse 11. So let's go back to verse 11. Verse 11. Yan. So, uh, from verse 11, sino pa yung hindi ko natawag? Si Uyamani. Natawag na ba kita? Oh, Kuya Manny. Yeah, wala si Kuya Manny. Si Ate Catherine na lang. Si Ate Catherine. So verse 11. Ate Ano po yung question po? So in... in so, Titignan natin yung various stages ng understanding nung, nung blind man about the Lord Jesus. Now, let's start from verse 11. Ito yung una. Ano yung understanding ng nung blind man about who the Lord Jesus is? So, from verse 11. Ang understanding niya po muna is si ang um, Panginoong Heso Kristo ay tao po. Hindi, mm. hindi po muna siya Diyos kasi sabi niya po the man they call Jesus. So yes. yun po yung understanding niya. Okay, tama, no? oh, His understanding is the Lord Jesus Christ is a man. Then, uh, yes, then let's go to verse 17. Okay, so iba, iba naman. Uh, uh, si so na Si Ate Cristina naman. Ate Cristina, you there? Yes, Poppy. Sa verse 17, ano naman ang understanding na nung blind man? Uh, Doon po, isa na po siyang prophet na isa na siyang... Yun po, hindi lang siya ordinary man. Hmm. So, prophet na siya, di ba? Sabi. Okay. Kasi na, he's a man, ang pagkakakilala niya. But now, he's mm. a prophet. No. Then, okay. finally, let's go to verse 38. Yan. So, sino na po? Uh, Ate Presi. Kapo, Pastor. Sabi na po niya sa 38, 38 is Lord. I believe and he worshipped him. So, hindi naniwala na siya at nagpuri na siya sa Panginoon. Mm -hmm. So, nakita niyo yung transformation niya. Diba? From yung, yung vilip niya from the Lord Jesus being a man, the Lord Jesus being a prophet, and now the Lord Jesus being his Lord. No? Nakita niyo yung kanyang belief, na yung pro progression ba ng kanyang belief. Now, what is the significance of, of that? And how does it apply to our lives? Now, it shows that the man was progressing in his knowledge about the Lord Jesus Christ. For us, it is also natural that we pass through several stages in our in, in our knowledge about the Lord Jesus. Maybe for us here, uh, na na pagdaanan na natin yung stage na yan, no? Because hindi naman tayo mga bagong Kristiano na dito, you know. Samo pa sa mga mga uh, uh, I can say matatag na yung ating pananampalataya. So, we have passed through these stages na. But each of us should ask ourselves, in what stage are we? Whether our knowledge of Him is still growing or our knowledge of Him have become stagnant. So, basically, what we are trying to say is our knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ should should continue to grow. No? Um... It should not be stagnant. It should continue to grow. In verse 39, it seems difficult to understand at first glance no? itong verse 39 kasi sabi niya, for judgment I have come into the world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. But the, the key here, it is really the key, ito yung key to the whole passage that we are studying um. Uh, 
uh, tonight, no? Verse 39 means that those who admit that they are blind will be healed by the Lord Jesus, just as the blind man was healed. But those who whose spiritual eyes are blind but do not admit it and still claim that they can see, like the Pharisee, will remain blind. Yun ang sinasabi ng Panginoong Isus dito. Ibig sabihin, sa Tagalog, uh, if we are not able to admit that we are uh, sinning, then how can we be healed? No? Remember, um, if you will go to your Bible, okay, I think uh, we can go from here. No, then we will end, okay? Uh, okay. Here, no? So, sabi rito, in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, I, I know some of us, uh, maybe this is our favorite verse. Sabi, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Sometimes uh, we focus only in this uh, forgiveness of the sin, uh, mer mercy and forgiveness of sins uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. No? Sometimes uh, we forget about this, yung compassion. Uh, confession is admission. No, what uh, That's what I can say. Confession is admission. Um, you cannot admit something that uh, you think is ano is uh, hindi hindi mo um what I, anong ibig sabihin uh, hindi mo hindi mo nakikita na kasalanan hindi mo siya ma-admit no so parang dun balik tayo dun okay yun yung sinasabi ng Panginoong Isus dito no uh, yung mga pare si hindi hindi nila kasi ina-admit yung kanila mga kasalanan. So that's why, no, ang sabi ng Panginoong Jesus, some parties who were with him, heard him say and ask, what are we blind to? Jesus, if you were blind, Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. No. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. Because they claim na, na nakakita sila and yet, hindi nila na nakikita yung kanilang mga kasalanan. So yun yung tinatawag natin na spiritual blindness, no? After our spiritual eyes are open, it's still possible for our sight to be impaired or blurred. Sa tingin nyo, na tayo, na-open na yung ating spiritual eyes in terms of sa pag-recognize ng ating mga sin. Is it possible na maging impaired or blurred pa rin yung ating paningin? Well, what do you think? Para sa akin, Pastor, hindi na po. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Kuya Arnel, nagtaas ng kamay. Uh, ano po yung tanong mo, Pastor? Yun, yun, after na mag ma-open na yung uh, spiritual eyes natin, nagkaroon tayo ng awareness about our sin, uh, in, in the future, is it still possible na maging impaired impaired or blurred or uh, bumalik tayo dun sa ganong uh, uh, blindness? Mm, ayun. Uh, yes, it's possible po. Kasi kapag ka ang isang tao uh, nagbago na at uh, nalaman na ang katotohanan, namulat na sa katotohanan, nareceive ng salita ng Diyos, nagbabasa na ng salita ng Diyos. Ngunit kapag ka siya ay nagkasala at hindi siya nag na hindi siya natuto na mag-repent sa kanyang kasalanan at na humaling na siya sa kasalanan niya. Nahirapan siya kung hindi siya ganito po kasi yan, ang, ang salita ng Diyos ay parang salamin, di po ba? Hmm. Na kapag the more, the more we read, the more we, we can see our sins, the more we can see how holy is our God and how sinners we are. Kapag mas lalo po tayo nagbabasa ng salita ng Diyos, lalo po natin marirealize na uh, marami pa tayong kailangang baguhin, tanggalin, alisin at uh, talikuran sa ating mga lumang pagkatao, lumang pag-iisip uh, pag at yung way of life natin. The more we read the word, the more we see the light. The more we see the light, the more we see our sins. And the more we see our sins, the more we repent. Kaya pagka ang tao ay nalilibang sa kasalanan niya, yung kasalanan ay nag, 
aalipin sa kanya at doon siya ay napapalayo sa Panginoong Diyos. Ngayon, oh. ang tanong susi lang ay huwag mawawala sa fellowship, lalong-lalong na sa pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos. Huwag tayo, the, when we sin against God, instead na mahiya tayo sa ating kasalanan, magbalik tayo sa Panginoong Diyos. Amen. Tumakbo tayo kagad sa Panginoong Diyos. Sapagkat ang Panginoong Diyos, habang tayo ay binibigyan ng araw bawat umaga, nahuhulugan, ang kanyang mercy is new every morning. His mercy endures forever. Ang kanyang habag ay tinatanggap niya tayo kaagad sa ating mga kasalanan. Hindi tayo binibigyan ng buhay para hindi tayo mag-repent. The, the meaning of new life is new repentance. So every day we have to repent. Every day we have to examine ourselves. Every day during our devotion, let's let's look at the word of God as a mirror to ourselves and not to pinpoint others yeah. but to ourselves. Kasi sino bang harapin natin at the end? Ang Diyos at wala na magagawa ang tao. Wala na tayong masisisi. Wala na tayong ma, ma, mabiblame. Wala na tayong pag panghahawakan pa, kundi yung sarili natin mismo ikinabuhay dito sa mundo. So, that's how I can see na yung ating uh, personal relationship with with Jesus will determine our personal relationship with His Word. Kung hindi po tayo nagbabasa ng salita ng Diyos, paano po natin ma- maalagaan yung ating relationship with Jesus? We can just, we cannot just say, We, have, we are Christians and not reading the word or not read, not praying. It mm. always comes together because our relationship with Jesus involves communication, conversation with Him, and daily daily na cleansing ng ating Panginoon sa pamamagitan ng kanyang salita at sa kanyang dugo ng when we draw ourselves to His light. So, yun lang po. Hindi mm. napalayo yata yung topic ko. Okay. Kaya yun po. That's all okay. po. Uh, Kuya, thank you po for, for uh, sharing your answers. Um, Pastor Radio, on last na and then we will close na. Kasi 10 o'clock na. Ayun, okay. Maganda kasi yung sinabi ni Kuya uh, Arnel. Maalala ko lang dun sa verse 4 PA kung okay lang kung punta ka doon. Verse, verse 4? Apo. Hmm. So, umpisa. Hmm. Maganda ng sinabi ng Lord kasi dito eh. Ayun, sabi niya, as long as it is day, we must do the works of Him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. Di ba sabi niya, as long as it is day, we must do the works of Him who sent me, sabi ng Lord. So maging si Lord Jesus ang nagsalita nito. So ganun din dapat tayo kung ilalagay natin, ipaparaphrase natin. So as long as it is day, we, the disciples of the Lord, La, tayo na nakakilala na sa Kanya, we must do the works of Him, the Lord Jesus, who sent us. Habang tayo'y nabubuhay pa. Um, as, uh, as, um, through the years, madalas ko naririnig yung pag may, may nagkakaroon ng problema or parang papuntang backslide ang sasabihin. Hahanapin ko po muna yung sarili ko, pastora, yung gano'n. Tapos hindi mo na-attend, hindi sumasagot sa mga sa mga pagfa-follow up sa kanya. So maganding sinabi ni Kuya Kuya Arnel na mas lalong magsumigasig na umaten ng fellowship, umaten ng Bible study kasi hindi hindi talaga natin mahahanap yung sinasabi natin na sarili natin at uh, hindi 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 talaga tayo makakapag uh, panumbalik sa Lord on our own. Kailangan talaga natin ng kapananampalataya natin at kailangan natin ng salita ng Diyos. And uh, isasama natin doon yung nakalagyan sa dyan sa verse 4. Manatili sa ministry, mas lalo pang maging zealous, mas lalo pang maging masigasig sa ministry. Kumbaga, you surround yourself with the light para para mas lalong Um, tuloy-tuloy yung mas mag, ma, mas magiging tuloy-tuloy yung yung shalay sa yung yung renewal yung pag um, renewal natin sa Panginoon. Ayun po. Amen. Thank you po sa mga insights niyo. So, <clears throat> finally, uh yun sa with regards doon sa question, uh, possible ba na na uh, na open na yung eyes natin na uh, ma magkaroon ma impaired na naman yung eye, spiritual eyes natin or ma blur kumbaga uh, lumabo na naman yung paningin natin um kung nagpapatuloy tayo sa Panginoon uh, hindi yun imposible 
ay hindi yung posible. Pero kung yun nga sabi ni Kuya Arnel, Pastor Adyan, pag hindi tayo nagpatuloy, doon yun nagiging possible. Doon nando doon yung marang, mga causes, yung pride, yung hindi natin paggamit ng spiritual eyes. When I say hindi paggamit ng spiritual eyes, ibig sabihin yung hindi natin pag-examine ng ating sarili. No? Do, yung mga ginagawa natin kung it, 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 it still glorifies God no at lalong lalo na yung kasalanan so as a conclusion and then we will see, we will proceed to prayer no po as a conclusion tonight no we see the encounter of the Lord Jesus with the blind man the blindness as I said can have twofold meaning yung physical and yung spiritual so we we saw the physical blindness Uh, yun ang ginamit na, ng Lord Jesus uh, para abutin yung, yung blind man, yung healing physical. Pero ang talagang goal ng Panginoong Jesus is i-heal din yung spiritual blindness ng blind man. As we can see from the beginning, uh, uh, the, the blind man knows the Lord Jesus as a man. Then he became a prophet. Then finally he became His Lord, yeah. And though none of us here may be blind in the physical sense, it is always important to examine ourselves to see if our spiritual eyes have been fully opened by the Lord Jesus. Meaning, uh, what I'm trying to say is, examine ourselves if we are uh, uh, glorifying God. Like for example, in the message last Friday, the ba yung second doon is uh, we're doing it for the glory of of God no that uh, we are examining ourselves yun yung that what that that is what is meant eh, ng ng our eyes being open so let's pray Father God in heaven lord we thank you lord for tonight uh, in our bible study lord god thank you lord for the interactions thank you lord for the insights lord of the brothers and sisters Father, uh, I pray even Lord uh, to Brother Ashis, who, who I know it's already 12 o'clock there in in uh, Bangladesh or 1 o'clock in Bangladesh. So that's why he left. But Father, I pray Lord that the words that uh, we have received, Lord God, uh, have strengthened our faith and um, have uh, uh, illuminated our understanding in particular with, uh, with uh, spiritual blindness. Father, Lord, teach us and guide us, Lord God, that we may examine ourselves, that uh, uh, in our day-to-day living, Lord God, we will see and look, Lord God, that uh, if it is still you whom we are glorifying, Lord God, or if there is there are sins in our lives, Father, and uh, that we may admit and confess these sins, Lord God, and repent, Father, Uh, as we know, Lord God, that you are forgiving, especially to us, your children, Lord God. Uh, I pray, Lord God, that uh, uh, as we, as you continue to use us, Lord God, gamitin mo po kami ng mainam, Panginoon, uh, especially, Lord God, in uh, giving uh, us the opportunity, Lord God, to share the gospel, Lord God, to share the words, Lord God, to share your to share your words, your to share your love, Panginoon, doon po sa wala pa pong tamang relasyon at tamang pananampalataya sa iyo, Panginoon. Maraming maraming salamat, Panginoon, sa gabi ng ito, Lord. I commit to you, everyone, Panginoon, who attended this Bible study, Lord God. Um, dalangin ko po, Lord God, ang kapahingan sa kanilang physical na pangangatawan, Panginoon, na sa araw ng bukas, Panginoon, sa pagpasok po namin sa aming mga kanya-kanyang trabaho, Panginoon, nandun po yung yung aming uh, masiglang pangangatawan, Panginoon. At Lord, uh, nawa, Panginoon, na uh, datnan mo kami sa yung pagbabalik, Panginoon, na uh, nandun yung ginagawa namin, Panginoon, is uh, yung iyong will, Lord God, and purpose for our life, and uh, how wonderful and how joyful it is to hear you say, to hear the words from you, Panginoon. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Maraming maraming salamat po sa gaming ito. Panginoon, ikaw po ang aming um, dinadakila, niluluwalhati sa aming kalagitan, sa iyong matamis na pangalan ng Panginoong Isokristo, kami na nanalangin at sa gabay patnubay ng banan na spirito. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Nawala yung... Bye-bye. God bless. God bless po. God bless po sa inyo lahat. God bless po. Nasaan na yung ating...